give a message on submit to the Lord. And it's not going to be that long, but whenever the Lord says I'm done, I'll be done. So the topic and the title of my topic tonight is Submit So You Can Present. And the subtitle is The Rich Young Ruler. Amen. Amen. Now, there's three different accounts of the parable that Jesus gave of the rich young ruler. There's one in Matthew, there's one in Mark, and there's one in Luke. So, we are going to start off in Luke. And if you don't want to turn to it, that's okay. If you do, that's fine too. And uh, it reads, a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy mother and father. And the man, the rulers, the young, the young rich ruler said, I have kept all of these from my youth. Now that was the law. And we know that there is a curse attached to the law. For no man can keep it. And the law brought about sin and death. Wow. Amen? Amen? Because if you can't keep the law, then you're going to sin. Mm -hmm. And if you break that law, then the punishment is death. And so, what did Jesus say to him then? He said, Yet lackest thou one thing. All, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. Now you see, you can keep all of his commandments and still be lacking. And the rich young ruler felt this. He felt in his heart he had something lacking. Just like we know we have things lacking in us. You may never tell any of us. I may never tell any of you. But God knows. Jesus knows everything about us. Right. He knows what we're lacking. Amen. And all we need to do is totally submit. Uh -huh. So that we can present. Present what? Our bodies. A living sacrifice. Yes. Holy and acceptable unto God. Right. Which is our reasonable service. It's the reasonable thing to do. He expects us to do that. You know, in this world, we have people that say, you know, Charlie, he's a good person. He doesn't run around. He doesn't cuss. I've never seen him take a drink. He's a good man. But being good in your own self and your own ability will not give you eternal life. Amen. You can't in in inherit eternal life by just being good. That's right. And so Jesus instructed him, he said, sell all that you have and take the proceeds or the money and give it to the poor. Right. If you will be made perfect Jesus was making the statement, if you want to be perfect, uh -huh. then you need to do this. In order to follow the Lord, we must get rid of all of our idols. And you may think, oh, that's a strange word to use. Get rid of all of your idols. Because when you think of idols, most people think of a big monstrosity that looks like a golden calf or something like that. But the Lord let me see that there's idols in everyone's life. The word of God says that we have to go on to perfection. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, you cannot go on to perfection in God when you have not totally submitted yourself to him. You can't partially submit. And it's a process you have to go through. 
Everyone has to progress and progress and submit and submit and laying aside that sin, the sin that does so easily beset you. What is that? That's that pet sin that you have. The one that you cherish and cuddle and, and you just have to, you know, Lord, I gave you everything else, but I'm going to do this one thing in pride that nobody has to know but you and me. And then people wonder why they're not progressing in Christ. Why they're not becoming full-grown, mature adults in Christ. If you would, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but in Hebrews 12, uh, it talks about that sin that does so easily beset us. And you see, this was his chance to get rid of it. This was his chance to go on and get rid of everything that he had, but he couldn't do it. He went away sadly, the Bible says, because he, had, he was a man that was very rich. He had lots of possessions, and he couldn't get rid of them all. So that's that one thing that we value more than anything. God knows what it is, and he wants all of you, not part of you. The word of God goes on to say in verse 23, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now the Lord doesn't say that he will not enter in. It says that he will enter in with great difficulty maybe. And Mark, in Mark it says the disciples were astonished at Jesus' words. But Jesus went on to explain to them what he meant. He said, children, how hardly shall they that trust in riches enter the kingdom of God? A man can trust in riches if he has $100 or if he has $100,000. You see, it's not the amount of money or riches that he's got his trust in. You can be poor and still have a love for money. You can have, you can be mediocre, mediocre me, uh, what they call uh, blue collar or you know the uh, middle class, middle class person. Work every day, you require a little bit of things, and you're proud of that. You have something to show for your work. But if God came to your house today and knocked on your door, would you be able to say, and he asked you this question, would you be able to answer it? Lord, he would say, um, Elder Gresham, I, I come to your house today to let you know that I have something to ask of you. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to sell everything that you have. Sell your house your car, and everything that you have except the clothes on your back. And I want you to come and follow me. We're going to save the world. Would you be able to do it? This is a question we have to answer ourselves. And, I, and, and I'm not just picking on one person. But this is the question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we willing to give it all up for Jesus? Because that's what he expects of us. He wants us to submit totally to him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now, Jesus went on to say, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, can a camel go through the eye of a needle? Can it? No. No. So can a, a rich man enter into the kingdom of God? Probably not. Because the more you have, the harder it is to give it up. Do you remember when the widow gave her last? And, and other people had gave more than she did. And they questioned and wanted to know why is her offering so much better? And Jesus said because she gave her all. 
It's easy if you know you got a big bank account to write a thousand dollar check. But what if you only have five dollars in your pocket and you know you're not going to get any more for another month or so? Can you get that? That's the same thing Jesus wants to know tonight. Will you give your all for me? Amen. And this blew the disciples out of their, as Bishop would say, plum sockets. And they said, well then who can be saved? Who, who's going to be saved then? And Jesus said, with man it is impossible. But with God all things are possible. What does that mean to you? After you have given all your worldly possessions to Jesus Christ, then he also wants you to give yourself. Yes. What Jesus really wanted with the young ruler was him. Amen. He wanted him. He didn't care about his possessions. He wants you too. He wants all of you. How many are withholding something? You know whether or not you have given all of you to Jesus or just part. In Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so tonight, that's what I'm asking of you. My, my, my subject was short. My message was short, but it's very, very deep. Amen. Because it means that you're going to have to do some soul searching. You're going to have to go and get down in your prayer closet where nobody else is around and talk to God. Amen. Let him know what's on your heart. Tell him, Lord, I'm having trouble giving this up, but if you help me, Lord, I'm willing to give it up. And God will do just that. He's a loving God. He doesn't want to see us fail. He wants us to be able to give him everything. Tell him everything. Have you ever had a close friend that you felt very, very close to and you all confided in each other and you told each other everything? Well, that's how you should feel about God. Because he already knows, but he wants to develop a relationship. So that when you sit down and talk, which is when you sit down and pray, you're talking to your, your friend. You're asking him, can you help me? I don't have the strength to do this, Lord, but I'm willing to. And that's the most important thing, you're willing. Don't be like the young ruler because he was rich, he had everything, but he went away sadly. I thank you for your attention tonight and I ask God to let you put it in your heart and hide it there that you may be able to apply it to your life. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen.